Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. In the chapel, we have Psalms 34, 13. Keep your tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. So just have some things going on at work that, you know, you know me. I don't say anything, but I just deal with it and go on. And I'm not having a little bit of trouble dealing with it. You know, it just, so, yep, just not one to... Put a bunch of stuff out there and do, you know, just normal everyday stuff that just... <sighs> anyway, so we're going to go right on into Totally Hooked. I have one thing done. And this is Krista's Christmas present. And yep, it's the poncho. It's like a blanket wrap. It's just a rectangle. And of course, there's the thing. I got the... Um, I did end up doing the fringe, one of each color. You really can't tell, though, because they're all kind of light, even when it hangs down. Um, so, eh, it is what it is. I like it. Um, I used my fringe maker that was given to me by a friend, um, and it actually came out really good. Just wrap, cut, tie, and go. So, um, yeah, and it doesn't... I used to use cardboard and it would fold and so as I did it it'd get a little shorter a little shorter and then you have to go around and trim not with this thing and so I love it so there is Krista's and it is a cute little poncho I guess or wrap I don't know which y'all would call it and of course it's got her fringe on it that she likes so this one is totally hooked the ends are woven in. Now, you guys know I have a bunch of Christmas presents for work that I don't have the ends woven in on. So, um, I'm going to have to just set a day, like one weekend, and do it. So, yeah. So, I've got Christmas done. Um, I cleaned out my yarn basket. And I have just a couple that I'm working on. Um, first, I have this hat that I've got to get finished. It's for Christmas for work. So, I just need to sit down, force myself, and do it. Uh, then I have the little squares. This is my mindless knit, and I have tons of little squares in here um, that I am. And I actually have the ends of Krista's yarn in here so that I can make squares out of them. So, yes, I have that one. I've done a few more squares. I mean, I haven't counted them. I think I counted them once, and I had a dozen and I don't know how many I have now. So, uh, anyway, the only other one, well, I have two. One of the ones, and I've just decided this is in timeout. I'm not going to give up on it. I just haven't had time. And this yarn is so thin and so amazing that, unfortunately, I have to think every time that I do this. So, every round is a thinking round for me. So... Um, and that is the Geo, the Aqua Geo. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. So, yeah, I'm doing that one. I haven't worked on it. I'm just going to declare it in timeout for right now. Um, unfortunately, I want it done, but it's also kind of spring, so I'm hoping to have it done by the summer. Um, I used to just knit one or crochet just one thing, and I've gotten out of hand with this. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I should finish one before I start another. So, all right. The other thing is, is that I've been working on roommate's um, sweater. Honestly, I've gotten about that far done. Maybe four or five rows. I, I'm going to have to force myself because I've got 18 inches and I can't remember how many um, rows to do. Just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, which is a mindless crochet. But can't do it when roommate is home because this is a Christmas present for roommate. It's the hardest one to pull off. I'll be honest with you. It's the hardest one to pull off. So, um, let's see. I also have one more thing to share with you, and that is that I got my Mary Maxim Club, and they were really kind of late mailing it out. And so, yeah, I got it the 29th or something whatever Monday was so yeah today's Tuesday no I didn't get it yesterday the Monday before anyway 
So the 20 something, late 20s, I got the kit. Now, the kit came with four balls of this, um, it's called Babe Soft Cotton Worsted. It is 55% acrylic and 45% cotton. It's 246 yards per ball. Um, so it's this and it's got some darker, like dark, I don't know if you can see. Uh, it's really dark right there and then it fades to this lighter up here and then it goes to this. So it's really kind of cool. I like the color of it. So the pattern that came with those four balls, there was actually two in the thing. And I think I'm gonna make this one. You can make one, I think it said four, four balls of any color. Oh, and this color is called, hang on, it's a cute color, Sky Pie. So yeah, it's a beautiful color. And these are the slippers, the, the pattern, and I'm going to make these. I love the look of that. They're just cute. So I'll probably be making those. And it also came with this pattern. It takes one ball. So if I wanted to order another ball of the Sky Pie, my little hat and slippers would match. So, yeah, I thought, hmm, I might do that, you know. <clears throat> and it does, it almost looks knit at some points, but not the crochet design ribbing. I don't know. Anyway, so I got those two patterns. But because they were super late, you know, Mary Maxim's customer service is out of this world they know when they have an issue and they always always make it right and this time they sent a little note it says dear customer please accept this bonus pattern and yarn for the delay in shipping now this is by this pattern is by yarn inspirations um it is used with one skein of diamond lace or one skein of red heart critique in the color tide pool way now i would tell you what this is but <laughs> worm stole my yarn wrapper so i don't have a way to tell you but i will show you so this pattern is beautiful okay it's called One Skein Diamond Lace Crochet Scarf, okay? And it is designed by Tamara Kelly of Mowgli Blog, M-O-O-G-L-E Blog. So, Tamara Kelly is the one that, you know, and there's the uh, Mowgli, Mowgli Blog. So, and it's super easy, but... It's my favorite. It's got a chart. I am so much better at reading a chart than I am reading the directions. I, I just always have been. And maybe it's because I'm visual. I don't know. But back to this yarn. So this is the yarn. And I've, I started, and I've gotten this far. It is a simple workup, but you do have to pay attention to where you're at. Um, awesome awesome little thread here so and this is you can still see part of the lighter colored but there's one two three four colors here so yeah and it's got sparkles in it i like the way that's coming out it, it actually shows like the true colors so yeah um I like it. It's a simple pattern, but very elegant looking. I'm super glad I have it in my plastic front money bag. And that one I'm working on. Uh, I've gotten to a point where I, I did, I don't know, I'm up past this. I've started a repeat. 
but all I have to do is figure out what row I'm on in my work when I quit and then I can just pick up the pattern from there by seeing this um, so it's not a hard pattern I just have to make sure I know what row I'm starting on um, especially when I quit and then start back so but and it's not really a mindless knit because you have to pay attention to what you're doing and no row is the same so yeah but and it's like four or five row repeat so I can't remember it all but I'm pretty good at picking that one up I'm, I'm okay with that all right then let's see I think that's all I've got I have been working on some other things um, I dug out the fiber that Worm barfed up. He played with whatever you want to call it, and I've been working on that, but I haven't gotten it to a point of spinning it yet. I'm straightening it out and lining it up. And, um, 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 you'll know why I've left that on here in a minute. Um, but... Other than that, I don't have anything else on the wheel. Now, I have been doing a little bit of sewing. I found that I went and got some... My hair is just kind of everywhere. My bangs get long, and I don't like the way that people are cutting them. They, they don't listen to me when I say don't use water. I've got a, a funky cowlick, and I like it to go like this. And if you look, this side does beautifully. It's a little long. This side, hmm not so much um yeah they just don't cut it the same and it doesn't i think this side's a little longer they don't get it straight i don't know anyway so i decided headbands are in my future went and picked up i don't know because i should have read the thing i don't know if they're a fat quarter or just a yard of, of material but i just got they were like I don't know, dollar twenty-seven or dollar eight. I don't know. Maybe it was ninety-eight cents. I was thinking right at a dollar, and I got a dollar's worth of material, and made a fat and a skinny headband. This one's fatter. This is a skinnier. Um, it was. I didn't have any waste at all. I just used a six-inch piece of elastic, which next time I'll probably be using six and a half. Because when you tuck your mask behind and you've got that going around your head, it just seems tight. Everything's just pulling at your hair, uh, pulling at your head a little bit. And by the end of eight hours, now for a couple hours, didn't bother me at all. But at the end of a 12-hour shift, um, I work from 6.45 to 6.30 most of the time. So yeah, at the end of a 12-hour shift, I was like, mm, yeah, that. It just gets so I think that by lengthening the elastic in there a little bit I will like it a little bit better now I also found one thing to dress them up and that is um, they have these little plastic buttons um yeah this one's a heart I didn't sew them on though I cheated <laughs> I safe depended on um, well, I don't know. Maybe I want the heart on the other one. If I get a collection of buttons and a collection of headbands, I can mix and match. So I'm all about convenience. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. Uh, I actually used this one Halloween because the office dressed up and I was a pirate. I didn't really. Not a big Halloween person since RJ wasn't. When Tori was little, we were. Um, when RJ came along, he didn't want anything to do with Halloween, so we just made a pot of chili, which, moving right on into RJ's world in the farmhouse, uh, we did the same thing. We made a pot of chili, but we had just been on vacation, and we'd had family dinner with Tori, and RJ was out of town, so roommate and I made a pot of chili, but we didn't have a bunch of people over or anything, and we never get any trick-or-treaters. We were right off the highway, like our driveway is off the highway. There's no sidewalk. There's no, someone would intentionally have to be stopping here. As in, we live on a divided highway. So if you're headed that way, you can't just whip in and see us. You have to be headed south to turn off to come in the driveway. Um, and if you want to head north, you go across and 
circle back around if you want to. Yeah. It, we live on a divided highway, and we can only head south. But there is a turn up there and a turn up there. So, yeah. It is what it is. Um, so, I made those. And I, I did the Halloween thing. Um, we just had the uh, chili. Ugh. Sorry. I did the grocery shopping the day before. And apparently, I mean, I understand that there's shortages of stuff. Because we basically cut, shut down our um, economy a year ago. Playing catch up, we've now exhausted our backup supply, so we're having trouble keeping up with manufacturing. Um, what people don't realize is that there's an expiration date on food and stuff because some of those things take longer to get to your shelf. So there'll be a whole warehouse full of, and I'm going to use Fritos for a reason. Um, and now, a year later, we're opening back up our economy, but we can't get our Fritos out because they're behind because we used a whole warehouse full of Fritos during the time they weren't producing. So now they're struggling to keep up and they can't get any backup in the warehouses. It'll even out again and it'll get there. But in the meantime, when you're having a chili dinner and I guess the news said there was going to be a cold snap. Yeah, it was getting colder. I don't pay much attention to the news. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't pay much attention to the news and I don't like the things that are on there. So I do occasionally watch the weather, but I hadn't in a few days. So when I went in to get groceries, there was a lot of things gone, a lot. And I was like, oh my goodness. And so roommate went on a hunt for Fritos because chili and Fritos just go together. It took a couple of stores and we found just those little snack bags and there was only three bags of those and we bought two of them so yeah it Fritos was our hard to find item there was a couple other things that I couldn't find but I substituted um, one of the things that I've learned over the years is at any given time there's at least a week's worth of food in in the house um, I I do shop a couple weeks at a time oh I'm not tired I'm just getting cold I looked outside and the sun is not coming through the window and it's just kind of drismal and I haven't turned up the heater it's 68 69 and so it's making me when I get cold I get a little yawny I guess um anyway so with the cold snap coming According to the weather and me trying to do, and I guess Halloween and everything. Anyway, I had to make do with some stuff. And yeah, I, I just couldn't believe that the Walmart shelves were so bare when I went in to get stuff. So anyway, I always keep food in the house. I never react to it's going to be a cold snap or it's going to be a, a tornado, whatever. Um, I like to keep about a week's worth of food at least in the house so anyway there was that issue um the other thing that i'm doing oh, that was our halloween anyway short to the point all over the place don't know because i'm yawning and i can't keep up with where i'm going with this uh the other thing that i'm doing is i had made three very specific shawls for christmas you guys had seen them Life happened, and I felt that they needed their prayer shawls long before Christmas, and I ended up giving them to them. So, for replacement items, just a quick little gift. Um, I'm making some of these bags. I don't know if you guys remember these. The little canvas uh, French seamed type bags, and they have handles. So, I've got this one that I'm working on. And I'm going to get them all cut. That's the first one I have cut and pinned. Then I've got a flowery with that. I've got... This one I think is my favorite. I don't know. I really like that one. That. And then I've got that. And then I like this one too. Got that. 
with the little checks on the bottom. And then I have this one, which is straight maroon colored bottom. So, um, and remember the bottoms and the handles will match. Uh, I'm going to get them cut today. I've got that hat to work on. I want to get things finished up. I was supposed to have um, Jane come over, but Jane didn't make it. She wasn't feeling good. So I have this afternoon to kind of do crafty stuff. I'm going to get all these cut. I've got my laundry done, got the house cleaned up. Um, I'll probably just turn on the radio, go to cutting, and then I will get some work done on this. Um, or I will get some work done on this. That's that sweater and this is that scarf. Um, well, I should be working on this. Okay, I take that back. I'm not going to work on this today. I'm going to take it away and I'm going to work on this hat and get this hat done because that's what I need to do. So when I'm not, once I get these cut, I will work on that hat and get that hat done. It's just rows, 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 and you stitch the top and roll the bottom. So um, it's kind of one of those free patterns that I found and it was cute and it looked ribbed and so yeah I'm gonna be doing that hat um, that is what I'll be working on today uh, I don't know I do have this that I could work on but I just need to put it aside not it's not in any big hurry so um, the sweater the hat are still Christmas and then after that it's whatever um, I've got to look and see what I need for Christmas. I'm going to do these bags for Christmas. Once I get this hat, that sweater, and these bags done, I should have enough to accommodate all Christmas presents. Um, I've got Christmas done. Roommates will be done. So I really should be a good girl and concentrate on these three things. There went my hook. <laughs> Um, so I will try and concentrate on those three things today um, for the next little bit um, for the next month or so I don't have Thursdays off I have Tuesdays off and half day on Thursday so Thursday mornings or Tuesday yeah Thursday mornings I'll be crocheting because it's easy to clean up um, and I've got the month of November to get that done so anyway um, RJ's world I guess we talked a little bit about Halloween and all that, but he was out of town for Halloween and we made the chili. We'd already put up with Tori, you know, and she likes to dress up and kind of go overboard and RJ doesn't. So RJ was out of town. We'd spent time with Tori on vacation. So we just did a, a pot of chili on our own. Hitch, stop. Hitch. Stop. Um, anyway, I just, he's, I startled him so he quit. Um, he, uh, Tori passed out candy at her house. We made our chili with our found Fritos. <laughs> RJ was down in Texas, him and about four other guys. Or three, three other guys? Was there four total? Can't remember if there was four or five total. If there was four total and then him or he was one of the four. But anyway, he uh, was down in Texas. Texas wasn't very kind to them, so they came home. Um, they shortened the trip and said, we're just not going to do Sunday. That way they weren't further down in and didn't have more gas money into it. They just turned around and came back and cut their losses. So, um, anyway, they did that. And so RJ wasn't here for Halloween. Um, I did get word that one of the local pizza places that we shop, you know, um, I want a free pizza, so I'm giving it to RJ. <laughs> it's just a customer service thing, and you put your name, or you put your phone number on the back of the receipt, and then they pull one out, and they call it and say, you want a free pizza? So, yeah, they did that. Um... But other than that, like I said, he was in Texas, didn't come home in very good spirits because it just, you know, there's weekends like that. And uh, so we just ate chili and then kind of hung out here and we did find some scary movies on TV. So we watched those. Um, we kind of jumped between them. I don't even remember what all we watched. 
There was a couple of them, and we were jumping between them. So, oh well. Anyway, not a whole lot going on in the farmhouse. Not a whole lot going in, on in RJ's world. Him and I had a long talk today um, about that Thursday job that he took that's just on Thursdays. And he says the boss kind of likes to yell at everyone. Um, and just... It's not about if you did anything wrong. It's if one person does everything, something wrong, they all get yelled at. He says, I'm not in the habit of getting yelled at for something I didn't do. And he looked at the young lady, and he was actually offered a higher position. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm not taking it. Um, they're trying to lock him into being there every week, even after winter. But he said... I'm not that kind. I will not gripe about the job that the new person's doing for the simple fact that I don't plan on stepping up and doing it myself. He said, and I just told you I wouldn't. So he said, you know, but he also told them that if nobody else was willing to step up and do that job, that they didn't have the right to gripe either. And she said something about, you know, well, it's more money, more RJ says, ma'am, I can make money anywhere. He says, I'm not proud. I can go to McDonald's and flip burgers. He says, I don't need your money. He says, I show up here because I want your money and I want to be here. If I wanted to work someplace I don't want to work, I can go find any job in the world. And he says, and if I have to to make my truck payment, that's what I'll do. He says, I'm here because I want to be here. I'm here because I want you to pay me for a job well done. And she just went, well, okay. <laughs> and they just don't get him. They don't, you know, he's not going to gripe and he's not going to fuss with them. But if you don't treat him right, he's not going to stick around for it either. He just looked at me and he says, I'm not in the habit of getting yelled at for something I didn't do. And if that's what you're going to do to me, I'm out of here. And he told her flat out, he says, I will step off my horse if it happens again. I will step off my horse. Thank y'all for the opportunity to employ me. And I will load my horses and be gone. You don't scream and yell at us and expect us to respond to that. We have respect in ourselves. We have dignity. And you don't, you don't do that to us. Just don't. And I'm kind of having the same thing at work. And I was ready to walk away. I love my job though. Um, but I'm not one to be yelled at. Especially if I didn't do anything. Or if I think, now there's, there's two sides to every story. Okay, so, or if I think I don't deserve it. And I am one that if I'm going to come to you and talk to you about it, I'm going to hear your side of it. The problem is, is that the other person isn't going to hear my side of it. And I know that. So, he's going through it. I'm going through it. Everybody right now wants to scream and yell at people. We're not screaming and yell at people. Now, him and I have had some fights and we have screamed and yelled at each other. But in the end, we give each other a hug. It's a fight. It's not just trying to have a conversation. It's a fight. And there is a difference. And just yelling at me because I'm trying to have a conversation with you, I don't go for that. I'm not trying to have a fight with you. I'm trying to have a discussion. And there's a difference and people need to learn it. Um, now, if his boss wanted to come up and say, hey, this happened. I know you didn't do it, but let's beware. We take that very well. But to come up and yell at us because so-and-so did this and I don't want it ever happening again. Don't yell at me. I didn't do it. He didn't do it. And that's just the way I raise my kids. I don't like to be yelled at. So therefore, you don't yell at them. And, and they know to walk away. Because here's the deal. I have raised them to ask themselves at what cost. He could keep that job at the cost of his dignity 
and the cost of being treated like a human being. And, you know, it, he just, no. There's a ton of people out there that would appreciate him and not scream and yell at him for things he didn't do. Now, if he's got it coming, I also taught my children to take it. You take your licks. Don't do the crime unless you're going to do the time. Don't do something stupid and expect me not to react because I'm going to react. And if you got it coming, boy, you better stand up like a man and take it. And that is the way I raised him. And he'll tell you, I had that coming. He is one of the few people that, you know, and the thing is, is he doesn't even call me for sympathy. He'll go, oh, I did something stupid today. This is what I did. This is what, you know, I got yelled at, whatever. He's like, I had it coming. He knows. However, if he didn't do it and you're yelling at him, he didn't have it coming. You direct your angry. And I had someone tell me once, well, I'm just angry. Are you angry at me? No. Then don't direct it at me. You direct your anger at what is making you angry. And sometimes you have a right to be angry. But if you're not angry with me, you don't take it out on me. It's just, I don't know, I feel very strongly about it. And I raised my children to be that way. And it will eat me up inside if you are screaming and yelling at me and I didn't do anything. And I'm ready to walk away. Always have been, always will be. And screaming and yelling is never the answer. Um, we don't react very well to it. Uh, to a point where yesterday I wanted to walk away from my job. And I love that job. And I will walk away from that job if I have to. Because I will not be treated that way. I'm a human being and I deserve to be treated with dignity. I deserve to be treated with respect as long as I've shown you respect. If you feel like I haven't shown you respect for some reason, you need to tell me. Okay? Because I, it wasn't my intention. I've always tried to treat everybody with dignity and respect as a human being. And every human being deserves that. But RJ and I right now are in the same spot where people need to watch their words and watch how they say it. And I used to tell RJ a lot, and I, I haven't used it in a long time because he got it. It's not so much what you say, it's how you say it. Check your tone, check your attitude, check your... You know, your facial expressions, it's that. It, it's not so much what you say to me. It's how you're saying it. And that's what he's going through. That's what I'm going through. So we are, are trying very hard to not be dis disrespected, but not disrespect others because it's ma making us angry. And I'll be honest with you, I wasn't raised that way, so I have to check myself a lot. RJ was raised that way, so it's natural for him to check himself and, you know, me, I got to stop and I mean, and when I get frustrated, I got frustrated Monday almost to tears. So, um, the other thing that makes it worse is worm got fixed Monday and then all this was going on at work Monday and I'm just not, you know, you don't scream and yell at me. I'm on an emotional roller coaster. My dog's back there getting fixed and you know everything went fine he was in out he's here he's got a cone on he didn't even act like he had surgery I keep the cone on just so he didn't lick down there but he's fine but that's not the point the point is is I'm stressed over my dog and I'm getting screamed and yelled at over trying to have a conversation so I'm just not that way and from now on if I can't take it, I'm going to go find another job. You guys know that God has provided me with all of my jobs. I know you don't want to hear that. The aura, karma, whatever. The, the greater higher power that I choose to call God and my Savior provided me with all of my jobs. I was thinking about that again. Um, if you've followed us for very long, you know that my job at the shelter, I never even applied for it. RJ volunteered there and I was offered a job. I worked there for years, and then when something happened, I walked away. I'm not going to get into that. It's kind of, you can go back and 
check the other videos. Um, I was kind of thrown under the bus with state and I, I wasn't going to have it. So um, I uh, walked away, didn't have a job for a while. And then I got a friend of mine, his friend, a friend through a friend. Anyway, I knew the family and they needed a housekeeper. So I thought, well, I'll do that a couple days a week. And I went and did that and she had a very serious car wreck and I ended up taking care of her, like giving her showers and helping her. And so I believe God puts me where I need to be. Okay. Um, then something happened with the son. I just didn't want to deal with him. Again, about the disrespect thing. And I walked away from that job and the job with bios came up and it was the only job I had applied for. It was only, and when bios, when everything started going crazy, I only applied at the vet clinic. I've never had a problem getting a job because I rely on God to give them to me. I don't consider applying for a job. I consider it going for God's path. He puts me wherever he wants me to be. Just saying. So if it's time to move on with this job, then I guess he'll show me what he wants me to do. But I know that he doesn't want me belittled, yelled at, screamed at, and made to feel horrible. So, um, he doesn't want it to be a job that I don't want to get up and go to. I was very glad I was off today because when the alarm went off and yeah, I just said it and it, it's on all the time, <laughs> every morning. Um, I just went, Oh God, thank God it's Tuesday. If it had been a day that I have to work, I wouldn't want to go. Don't want to go at all. Um, I'm very thankful for the days that I work by myself sometimes, but it depends on who's working in the back. So I've been contemplating seeing where God plans on sending me because I know he doesn't want me in this turmoil. He doesn't leave me in this turmoil and he knows I don't handle it very well. He knows my strengths and my weaknesses. He knows it's one of the things that I just don't do very well. And I don't feel like, yes, he hands it to me sometimes so that he, I can learn to deal with it better. I'm getting better. I am checking myself more and more and I'm making sure that I don't say anything out of anger about anything, you know? So anyway, enough about that. I have wrapped it up. You guys have seen everything I'm working on, seen these. I'm going to get these cut today. I don't know if I'm going to stitch them up until next Tuesday, uh, but I am going to get the hat and the sweater worked on and go from there. And I probably will put this as much as I love that. Ah! Um, I would probably put it in timeout and the round the world squares in timeout and the G in timeout and I haven't started this yet but I might no <laughs> all of that's in timeout um the sweater the hat and get these done and I will be done for Christmas this is the first part of November actually today is what the second of November so I've got a few weeks I can get it done I know I can and then I'm good um unless I need another gift and then I'm out there so anyway I will let you guys off of here um have a great week and hopefully we will see you again next week, next Tuesday. Bye.